good morning, everyone. Um, as Lena said, I will be taking this uh, session into a more B2B direction. I'll be looking at strategic alliances, and I'll be uh, discussing how differences in knowledge and technologies between companies will impact on the performance of strategic alliances. And when I'll be talking about strategic alliances, I'll be talking about voluntary agreements between companies uh, that involve some sort of exchange, <laughs> sharing or co-development, for instance, of a new product. Um, examples of strategic alliances in, uh, include uh, joint development, joint ventures, joint R&D, but also co-marketing, product bundling and licensing. Before we get further, I want to start with a case. There is a company called Abby. It's a pharmaceutical company and it develops a drug called Humira. Humira is used to um, treat patients with certain autoimmune diseases, such as rheumatitis, psoriasis, and Crohn's disease. And it does help patients, but there are certain challenges involved with this drug. It needs to be injected. And 10% of all patients suffer from needle phobia, and a vast majority would obviously prefer to, would prefer an oral treatment if this was available. But a normal pill would not use, work for Humira. Because a normal pill, the, the, just, the outer layer is the digested away and it reveals the drug underneath. But for Humira, um, this drug underneath would be destroyed by the human intestine before it could be absorbed by the body. So now Abby is working with a lot of different companies, not in biopharmaceuticals at all, to find new ways to administer this drug. And one of these companies is developing a pill that is swallowed in a normal way, but when it enters into the intestines, it reveals a lot of tiny needles <laughs> <laughs> that attach to the intestinal wall and uh, inject the drug directly into the bloodstream there. Mm -hmm. Now, when Abby develops a product such as Humira, they will have knowledge related uh, to developing this product, but also knowledge on how to make money on Humira. So a company that does similar things, for instance, Janssen that develops a uh, drug such as Stellara, which is basically the same thing as Humira, <laughs> will have quite similar knowledge to that of Abby. So we can say that the technological distance between these two companies is quite small. Compare that to our case, where Humira develops, um, where Abby develops Humira, and this spiky pill company will develop mm -hmm. spiky pills. <laughs> so one company will know how to develop and make money on a biopharmaceutical bio drug, whereas the other one will know how to make money on and develop uh, spiky pills. Mm -hmm. And then the technological distance between these companies will be relatively large. So what happens when two companies that are technologically distant, that know uh, different things that have different technologies, are to work together? What happens when they enter into a strategic alliance? How does this, does this strategic alliance perform? Well, on the one hand, we know that that technological distance increases. The companies will be able to exchange more knowledge. If we know the exact same things, of course, we cannot exchange knowledge at all because we know the same things, but once we become more technologically distant and more and more technologically distant. There's more knowledge exchange that can take place between us and our alliance should perform better. On the other hand, the more technologically distant we become, the more difficult it is for us to understand each other. Not only the knowledge that the other company will have, but also to understand the other party in themselves. And this increases, increases the cost of an alliance and will make the alliance perform uh, worse. So how do these two effects combine? Well, previous research indicates that uh, the effect will be something like an invert U-shaped curve. And that will look something like this. So at small levels of technological distance, um, well, at no technological distance, there's no knowledge exchange that can take place overall. It's easier to just develop new knowledge on your own than to have to cooperate with another company. But once this technological distance begins to increase, suddenly there's some knowledge that we can exchange. And even though it may be more difficult 
to understand each other at this point, this negative effect will be vastly outweighed by the positive effect of this knowledge exchange, which leads to a more positive performance. And this goes on, increases until a certain point when it becomes, when the difficulty of understanding each other begins to outweigh the positive benefits of being able to exchange knowledge at large levels of uh, technological distance. When we have vastly different knowledge, when we use vastly different technologies, the problem of understanding each other will become so great that it will simply outweigh any benefits that we could get from knowledge exchange at all. And previous research has uh, shown that this is the case when companies try to develop new products. What we do in our research is we find that it also plays a role for the pure financial performance of uh, a strategic alliance. Knowing that may be important in and of itself, but perhaps equally important is to know if there are certain characteristics of alliances or companies that make them better at dealing with this technological distance. Is it possible that some companies and alliances simply perform worse in the face of technological distance, that simply smaller differences leads to meeting this breaking point faster and in a more negative performance? Or conversely, is it possible that some companies and alliances are much better at taking advantage of <laughs> differences in knowledge and technologies? So to pursue these three ideas, we looked at three main categories of factors. One factor was simply, had the companies in the alliance worked together before? Now, this might intuitively seem true. If we have worked together before, we understand how the other thinks, and we can more easily take advantage of what, whatever they know. Similarly, if we have both worked with another company before, it is possible that we can have uh, get information about our current alliance partner through this other company and just get a head start on the alliance in that way. And thirdly, we also look at network effects. And what do I mean by that? Well, companies do not exist in a vacuum. They coexist with other companies, of course. And these companies, they collaborate and affect each other. And because companies do not only collaborate in pairs, they form networks of relations between companies. And we know some things about the effects of networks on both companies and the collaborations between them. For instance, we know that central companies in a network tend to have more information about things that go on in a network than companies that are less central in a network. And we hypothesize that if you have both more information by being central and new knowledge by cooperating with someone who is technologically distant, who does something different, who knows something else, then you have more potential for creating value. We also hypothesize that if your alliance bridges to different networks, then you will have access to knowledge in the other network. And if you have access to new information and new knowledge, then you also have more potential for creating value and increasing the performance of your life. We look at these hypotheses by using, um, uh, we look at alliances worldwide, several hundred thousand. Um, we combine them with financial data and patent data. So we look at return on assets as a measure of the performance of alliances, and we use the patents of a company to know and chart out what the different alliances, uh, sorry, what the different companies, um, what they know, what their knowledge is, what the technologies they use. And we end up with 1,060 core alliances uh, from American companies within five industries, in pharmaceuticals, electronics, computing, uh, communications, and chemical industries. And what we find is, well, Indeed, there is this inverted U-shape between the technological distance and the performance of the alliance. Surprisingly, 
having worked together before does not help when it comes to technological business, nor does having a common alliance partner. So we have no evidence to say that having worked together before or having a common friend helps you take advantage of differences in what you know. But we do find that being centrally located within the network may help you take advantage of the technological differences. Similarly, we do find that if your alliance bridges together different networks of companies, then you perform better if there's also a technological <laughs> distance between your two companies. So, what are the main takeaways from this? Well, first of all, there are benefits and pitfalls of technological distance, of knowing different things, of using different technologies. Well, on the plus side, you may be able to take advantage of what your partner knows. But on the downside, it may be that you are too difficult and that it may be that you are too different and that it may be too costly to take advantage of this knowledge. Secondly, we find that centrally located companies perform better given technological distance compared to less centrally located companies. And this implies that simply having more alliance partners, collaborating more, may help your company understand new and technologically distant alliance partners. And perhaps is this an example that practice makes perfect. Finally, Bridging alliances tend to perform better given a technological distance. And this may suggest that the, the valuable alliance is the one that combines new knowledge and information that firms in your network don't already have. And this may suggest that if you're going to cooperate with someone who does something very different from you or knows something very different from your own company, then this will be especially beneficial if companies in your own network don't already collaborate with this other company, or vice versa. And with these three thoughts, I thank you for your attention. <laughs>